How's everybody doing? Is that better? Good afternoon. What an event. I want to just thank all the New Heights staff, the administrators for putting this together. It's the first time we've ever done anything like this. Um, I think that Dr. Jones had a vision for what today could and should look like, and it looks like we made that vision a reality. So congratulations, and thank you to everybody who had anything to do with all the events of today. Thank you so much. All right, so this is our ninth orientation. There are only nine st um, staff left that can tell you they've been here this entire time. That's out of about 60 people, nine of us are still here. Nine very proud people, and it never, ever, ever gets old. Um, as I listened to everybody walk in, I heard all of that high energy, um, some of that nervousness, and I can tell you, if you're here, you're home. So thank you so much for trusting us, and thank you for all of your new families for choosing New Heights. Um, I can tell you a story. Um, this young lady, her name is Alicia Mason. Um, she was here in these seats back in 2016. She was in the seventh grade. And I greeted all the families, and she stood out because uh, she had like this, this big energy. She was jumping around and a little nervous and had a whole lot to say. And I asked her, are you proud? Are you happy to be here? Are you going to college? And she said, Mr. Walker, I don't know anything about college, but I um, do know that, that I really want to come to the school because my parents say it's going to be a good place for me. And I said, great, 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 welcome. Um, later that year, we took everybody hiking, and I watched this little girl, like, will her way to the top of this mountain where all of her classmates were tired and complaining, and she was like the cheerleader and helped everybody get up, you know, get up, encouraged us all to walk one foot in front of the other until we got to the top. And I said to her, when we got to the top of that mountain, you absolutely are going to go to college, because I just watched you, just watched you do what everybody else is struggling to do. And you fought through it. And not only did you get there, but you got everybody there with you. And that's what a college-going person does. And she laughed and she smiled. Um, a few years later, um, she had some, some challenges. And she was really struggling and was thinking about dropping out of school. And I had a conversation with her again. And I reminded her of that little girl that climbed that mountain that day back when she was you know, 12, 13 years old. And, and I said, you told everybody back then that they could do it. And I'm telling you, you could do it. You could do it now, too. Um, last year, my son played football at Nichols College. And at halftime, I went to um, talk to him. It was a senior day. I went out there in the field to have a, a ceremony. And right after the ceremony, someone said, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker. And I turned around. And it was Alicia. And I go, whoa, what are you doing? I didn't even know you came here. She said, yeah, I uh, took, a, took a little time, but um, I'm here, I'm on the dance team, and I'm starting like a national dance team here at Nichols College. And just want you to know that I'm doing well. And I'm so happy, so happy that I stuck it through. Because here at New Heights, not only did you encourage me, but all my teachers encouraged me, my classmates encouraged me. And I know, I know that I'm gonna graduate college. And I promise not only the staff and you, but I can promise my parents, and I know it's gonna be a reality. And I think back, right, here she was, 12, 13, in your seats, right, not even knowing what college was all about, but knew that people wanted her to get there, and then showed a, a spirit like I'd never seen before one day by climbing this difficult mountain when everyone struggled, and then had some challenges in her life herself, and still fought through those challenges. And there she was, unexpected, starting a dance team at a college, and making a difference and knowing that she's going to give back to her community when she gets done. And that is really the New Heights story, right? The New Heights story is we're all here. None of us know where we're going to be in seven, eight, year, nine years from now, but on, also understand that with hard work and dedication and being surrounded by people who care about us and encourage us, that we can do whatever we want to do. So if you're here, that's what this is about. And if you believe in yourself, You'll get the encouragement from all of us to do whatever it is you need to do to be what you want to be. So I, I'm the executive director. My name is Amari Walker, and I'm proud, proud, proud to be a founding member here and really, really excited about not only where we are today, but where we're going in the future. 
Thank you so much for believing in us and good luck. in the enrollment department, so this is just a friendly reminder. If we are missing any of the registration requirements, uh, please make sure you get that information to us, especially the physical immunization, but the nurse is here to remind you of that as well. Uh, families, if your scholars were just offered a seat within the last week and you haven't scheduled, an in-person registration with me, and please make sure you do so, and I'll be following up with you as well. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Pyrus. I am uh, Dr. Sumner. Some of your lovelies will find me. My name is really Dr. Beyonce. You'll figure out why later. We are in that joke. I would like to admit that a student gave me that name, and I just didn't fight them about it. I mean, who would? Why would you do that? So what we're going to do right now is separate the babies from the adults because babies can't sit and listen, especially not, not right next to you. And we want to give you, the, the children, an opportunity to see the school, see some of their teachers. All right, we are going to be greeted by our chief academic officer, Renee Lewis. She is the... Um, human being responsible for everything your children learn, all of the things that the teachers do, curriculum, materials, she's got a very big job. So she's going to share with you an overview of the curriculum and answer any questions at the end. So please give a round of applause for our Chief Academic Officer, Renee Lewis. Good afternoon, family. So, it is so good to see you here today. I want to start by saying, and this is um, two weeks ago today, we started with our new staff orientation, and Monday a week ago, we started with our, um, with our full staff, um, some of professional development. And one of the things that is most important about New Heights to me is that we are a wall to wall early college school. So what does it mean to be a wall to wall early college school? It means that our senior focus is to make sure that we're gearing up and preparing all of our students, all of our scholars to be successful in college. So then, well Renee, what does that mean for a sixth grader? That means that the sixth grader, we have to be really focused on what they learn and how they learn so that they, their learning can accelerate so that when we're ready for them to take college classes and the first college classes at New Heights starts in ninth grade, they're ready to go. They're ready to go. So, um, one, there are a couple things that we do to make sure that that happens. First of all is that we have the singular focus and you're going to have your students that are going to talk about the PAC skills. You're going to look at their agenda books that's going to have information about the PAC skills. And the PAC skills are skills that are necessary for every student to be successful in college. PAC skills are presence, academic, conduct, character, and knowledge. And students, not only will they be taught about it, but they will also be assessing themselves on how they're doing in PAC skills. In terms of their curriculum, um, in middle school, all of our scholars, they take the standard curriculums, ELA, math, science, social studies, health and wellness, and they take either computers, they take computers and arts for their electives. Um, in middle school, our classes are 67 minutes long, so it's good enough for us to do a good chunk of time to focus on what they need to learn. One of the things that I know that gets asked of kids when they get home, how was school today? It was good, it was okay. What do you have for homework? And oftentimes, nothing. Here's the thing, there's not one scholar 
that should say to you, I don't have anything for homework, and I wish I had a copy of the agenda book. When one way for us to keep our family communication is students will have, every student, every scholar will have an agenda book. And with their agenda book, in each and every class, they're going to write their homework. So I'm encouraging you. It's in all of your backpacks if you got one. They're all in your backpacks. So I'm encouraging you to ask, to look. What are they studying? What are they learning? Because even if our scholars come in and they're not quite on grade level, it's our job to accelerate them so that they're ready, positioned, and prepared for early college classes. They're doing something that I didn't do. They're doing something that Dr. Summer didn't do. They're doing something that many of the adults didn't do. Whereas our scholars are taking college classes while they're taking high school classes. And that's a tall ask. But in order to get them there, we all have to partner for them to get there. So that was my last thought. Um, if you need anything, I'm Renee Lewis, R. Lewis, at New, in the handle for New Heights. Org. Um, so thank you so much. It was good to see you all here. Some of you were like, I didn't get any, I had an agenda book. Agenda books were built into the New Heights bags, but if you did not get New Heights bags, your babies will get one on the first day of school. Okay? So if you didn't get one, they will get one. So please feel free to harass your children about that agenda book, all right? So next we've got our tech team. Give it up for our director of technology, Jorge Vega. Hello, everybody. I said hello, everybody. Hello. All right, good to see you. <laughs> um, uh, so my name is Jorge, and um, I've had the opportunity to work here now for three and a half years. Um, and I think you've heard a lot about what New Heights can do for students. Um, New Heights does a lot for us in the building as well. Um, and, and, and a lot of that is in connection and communication and finding kind of community within New Heights. We are really working hard to make sure that, that community not only lives offline but online as well. Um, uh, we've had a brand new communications director, Wadner Pierre, um, who many of you will come in contact with. He's capturing what happens here every day. He's capturing our students' voices, our faculty's voices, and our families' voices. So it's incredibly important that we all take the opportunity, as we learn more, to tell our story. Part of that exists with connecting with each other via Power School. You're gonna hear, me, you're gonna hear Power School a lot for the next seven years. <laughs> um, it is our hub for information. Grades, contact information, messaging that goes out to families from everything from snow closings to uh, snow days to uh, major events here at the school. Power school is where we're going to use and parents have a portal. It's called the Power School Parent Portal. There's a link that I'm going to ask you all to make sure you visit. It's bit.ly forward slash ps for parents. bit.ly forward slash ps for parents. You can also find this on the school website. If you are a parent, it will walk you through how to set up your account. Please note that part of that setup is receiving an access code. The portal is currently closed. Before the start of school, we will send out a message that will let you all know that the portal is open and we'll follow that up with giving you the access code that you need as a parent to be able to connect your account with your child's account. This will give you the ability to stay up to date on grades, this will give you the ability to work with our nurse's office. This will give you the ability eventually to even purchase things that you or your child might need for the school. So it's really important that if you're starting your first step with us, that you start it with our Power School account. Okay? The other step that I'm going to encourage folks to do now, if you haven't been receiving text messages from us, that means you're not a part of our text list. The way that we do that is very easy. You dial 6 7 oh. You send a text message to 67587 
and either put yes or why. That immediately joins you to our school messenger list. This is essential. Without a school messenger text, you might be in the dark about school clothes. All right, so it's really important. And here's the critical part. Whatever phone you're using to connect needs to be the same phone number that you gave us when you applied and when you went through the process. Okay, so it's really important. The same mobile number that you use, the same mobile number that's in all of our documentation for you is the same number that you're texting from. Okay? Any questions about that? Did I hear you? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Um, the last part is tech support. This is our team here. Um, we're all very busy at the start of the year, but we are here to support you and your family. So if you have any questions from Power School to how to get up a tech to, hey, Mr. Vega, what's going on with these Chromebooks? Feel free to email us at tech support at nhcsb.org. We, we make it a point to get back to families within 24 hours. So please, 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 if you have questions, if you have thoughts, and you want answers, send it to tech support at nhcsb.org. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm looking forward to seven years of conversation. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Next up, we are going to have, I want to call you Reverend Dr. Maria Fernandez, who is our Assistant Executive Director. She knows everything. And she's going to talk specifically about our wall-to-wall -wall early college mom. Please give it up. You love her. I love her. Maria Fernandez. No pressure at all. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, as Dr. Sumner just said, I am Maria Fernandez. I'm the Assistant Executive Director. I always make sure that I stress the fact that I'm also a parent of a student here, so I truly, truly love and believe in the mission of, of the school. I also had a student, or son, who graduated from the school with his associate's degree, so welcome to our school. What we're doing is real, and I want everyone to have the same level of love and passion that we have for this uh, model. I want the parents and the students to feel the same way. So I'm honored today to be able to just share very quickly with you a little bit about our model. Um, Ms. Lewis shared some of the model, and you'll notice here in the bottom corner what our responsibility is here for your students is that we're preparing all students for college. It's not just some students, it's not just a small population, or those that come in and are really, really talented students, and we're saying straight A students get to do this thing. It's all students who are ready to be college students are going to take college classes. Um, before I begin, I'm actually, and I try not to have a lot of words on slides, but I think it's really important to share the mission. I want to say it loudly and proudly um, that the New Heights mission is predicated on the belief that all children are capable and worthy of earning college credits while attending our high school. Every student has the opportunity to earn a minimum of 12 college credits while enrolled in New Heights, and regardless of external circumstances, we as a school approach every child with the understanding that he or she can achieve this goal. This serves as the foundation of our school culture as it grounds our entire community in the consistent understanding that we are working with college-going scholars. So it doesn't make a difference if your student is in the 6th grade, the 8th grade, the 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th. They are either already college students or they will be college students while they are in this building with us. Um, the only other thing I want to share very quickly is this image here. We try to make it as easy to understand as possible, but I promise you that you will continue to learn more about our model. You'll learn more about the intricate details that go into preparing your students for college and enrolling your students in college classes. But at the very least, you can see here is the image that our students, depending on when they're ready, and you will hear me and other staff members say this over and over, we are very, very protective of our students and our students' transcripts. We understand how young they are when they start taking college classes. And we want to make sure that they're ready to start in these college classes before they're committing to a lifetime record, which is their college transcript. So some students will begin taking college classes in as early as ninth grade, while others might start taking college classes in 10th grade. And everyone starts taking college classes at either the end of 10th or 11th grade, and then again in the 12th. Some of our students that show their college readiness pretty early on, they became, become full-time college students in the 11th grade, and you'll notice that depending on when they start taking college classes, they can earn the minimum of 12 to 15 credits when they graduate from high school, 30 plus credits when they graduate from high school, or 60 plus credits when they graduate from high school. And I don't know about anybody else in this building, but 
I know when I graduated, I graduated with zero credits. So for any one of these pathways here that our students take, we are extremely proud of them. Um, and it is a huge feat for them to say that they graduated from high school with 12, 30, or 60 plus credits. Um, so we are excited about you guys joining us on this journey. Um, it is brand new to the state of Massachusetts, new heights and setting records day, day in and day out. And we're so proud and well, um, happy to welcome you guys on to this journey with us and look forward to talking more about the LA College model in future days and months. Thank you. If during this presentation you have any questions, please make a note of it because at the end you'll have an opportunity to ask any questions, all right? Can I have transportation? Please give it up for our director of operations. He's responsible for making sure everyone is safe and gets home safe. Attention! Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be pretty brief because I know many of you will probably have a lot of questions about transportation, so I'll be here all night. Oh, the other microphone. I also have problems following directions. <laughs> um, so for transportation, New Heights Charter School offers transportation for students in Randolph, Taunton, and Brockton. Um, that is absolutely guaranteed. For Brockton specifically, Brockton Public Schools, their school district provides transportation for New Heights. And so their uh, determination is that you have to live a greater distance than two miles from New Heights Charter School. So that is 2.1 miles and up, you get transportation. If you live 2.0, you would have to request an accommodation from Brockton's Transportation Department, which I am absolutely able to do for anybody um, that lives in one of those situations where you're right on that line. Very easy, very simple, and more often than not, you'll be able to get a spot of transportation. If you live 1.9 miles and there is a bus stop near your home, you very likely will not be allowed to use that bus because these buses are very full and we will not be able to guarantee regular transportation for your student. So if you're in that area, there are a number of different options you can take and that might look like a private transportation company or a ride share program and all of that information we have on deck to be able to help you get your child to school safely. Um, I did email everybody their transportation information. Um, it may have gone to your spam account, but I will be in this room after this presentation to confirm anybody's transportation um, and work with you on any transportation issues for that. Other than that, I will hold questions until after the presentation. Yay, Tim Chen! I love you. <laughs> Next, we will hear from our, the one who keeps us healthy and safe as well. Nurse Deb Rocklesby, please give it up for our nurse, our head nurse. Hi, everybody. So there's two nurses in the nurse's office, uh, myself, Debbie, and Shirley. Um, we're in there all day. Um, if you had to describe my job, it's to keep everybody safe. And the way that, the best way you can do that is having an updated physical always on at the nurse's office. So you need an updated physical for the first day of school or your child cannot start school. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape, but there are some that are lacking. Yeah. Um, if your child has an allergy, needs an EpiPen, or has albuterol, um, they need an order to carry it themselves. So you have to call the doctor and just get an order for them to carry it themselves. If you feel like they can't do that, I can carry it for them. I just need the orders and I need the EpiPen and the albuterol. And that should be done like the first week of school. Um, there's also a form, and it looked like a lot of people signed it, it's over-the-counter meds, and that's a Tylenol or Benadryl. That form has to be checked off and signed for me to give your child um, any medicine. Um, the younger ones, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, I always call the parent before I give the med. Um, the older kids, not so much, but I'll always call you if I'm going to give a med. Even if you checked it off and signed it off, I will call you. Um, so that's about it for that. And I just wanted to go over a program that we have. And it's called Protecting All Smiles. And it's a program through the state 
that we have a team of hygienists, dental hygienists that come into the building. This is free for everybody, um, as long as you sign the consent form. And it's for two dental cleanings a year. Um, it's a great program. The kids, they don't love it, but they, it's a good program for them. Um, they get their teeth clean, they get fluoride, they get a little prize. It's really a positive um, program. I'm gonna have permission slips over there, if you are interested in doing that, just fill it out and I'll take them. Um, and then we have Barbara from the Red Cross that would like to speak to you for about five minutes. Hi everybody, thank you so much for the warm welcome. My name is Barbara Cotton and I'm the Executive Director for the American Red Cross. And first off, I'm not going to ask you for anything. I want to tell you about a young woman that I met at the table about half an hour ago. And she said to me, do you know your blood type? So I'm going to ask you, if you know your blood type, raise your hand. Nice and high so I can see. OK, so the only reason you know that is either A, you've needed blood, or B, you've donated blood. Right now we're in an emergency shortage, and so I'm here as part of that, but also because I'm part of this community and I'm really welcoming and embracing being invited to be here because we're also concerned about your safety. So I wanna highlight, if you haven't donated before, please consider doing that. People of color are a fantastic match for those who have sickle cell. And when I was here last year for a fair, many of the students said, hey, I have sickle cell, or I have someone in my family who has that. So it's an amazing way for the kids to be able to help the community and for you to also help the community. Um, another thing that we also have, and I was able to sign many of you up, but if you're interested, many people don't know this, we offer a free smoke alarm program. So if you are, because fall is coming up and so is in daylight savings time, check your smoke alarms. If they are not working, make sure you can make an appointment with me. One of our volunteers will come out and install those completely free of charge. We are all about making homes safe and the community here is about making homes safe for children as well. So please see me about the smoke alarm program if you haven't. I look forward to working with you and the school community for the rest of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next, you would have heard from our middle school and high school counseling support. And if anyone is here who is on that team that's not in the meeting, um, please give it up for Ms. Ryan, who is handed in the back. She is our eighth, ninth grade um, counselor. And the reason why the rest of them are not here is because they are literally attending to scholars and families right now. They are. Um, doing their job in a fantastic way. So I will be sharing some information about them. Um, this up top is Ms. Fuller. She's our sixth and seventh grade counselor. Ms. Ryan is the one in the back. She's our eighth and ninth grade counselor. This is Ms. Marks. She is the director of um, dual enrollment and dual enrollment counselor. And Ms. White is our one of our academic counselors. And Ms. Edmund is another academic counselor. So the counselors on this side tend to the social, emotional, mental health support of our scholars. It is hard existing right now. It's really hard for little ones to understand feelings, stress, conflict management, and these amazing human beings are excellent at skill building with your loved one because as parents said, it's not easy being green, so we are helping and building their and the scholars on the left side of the screen, yeah, are you looking at? No, for you it's the right side, are the academic counselors. These are the counselors who will be progress monitoring, grades, reaching out when your, when your child is failing below par with their academic performance, and they're also who you can reach out to specifically regarding college and career support, options and information regarding transcripts, and all that jazz. Am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Hey, maybe I think I'm being a counselor as a like, No, I can't. You guys are special. But if you see them, they're amazing. And um, just please give them a round of applause because they're fantastic. <laughs> Next is our culture team. And that is the pseudonym we will use for Dean's Discipline. Make sure you're over there. 
at New Heights uh, Charter School as the athletic director and associate principal for dual enrollment. Uh, dual enrollment you don't necessarily have to worry about at this point because you all are looking at the sixth and uh, seventh grade, eighth grade. Uh, but once they get into high school, they may come across me um, if students are kind of on that verge of getting into the college level. Um, so to speak to athletics, um, that's, that's the role that I'm focused on at this point. Jim, uh, if I'm being honest with you, that's just the standard. Um, I have no legitimate reason. Um, I came into the school year with it being students aren't allowed to wear sweatpants, so we're going to apply that uh, for gym class. Um, so, yeah. So this, yeah. So this is the standard for this year. Um, again, something that I came into. Uh, so to keep up with holding up to the standard and uh, making sure that all of our students are unified and practicing the same thing. That's just one of the things that we set um, for, for class. Um, if you want to talk about that at, off record, I'd be happy to, but I can legitimately, legitimately say uh, there's no actual reason outside of to unify our students and um, ensure that everybody's kind of looking the same. Um, for athletics, athletics are offered primarily at the high school level. Um, within our five-year plan, we are working towards offering more opportunities at the middle school level. Uh, right now, we have uh, soccer, co-ed soccer for the fall. Um, announcements for that will be available to students on September 4th, and tryouts for soccer will be on September 5th. Uh, with us uh, trying to move everything into power school, communication from athletics will also be sent through power school. So for the time being, um, please be on the lookout for any bit of communication coming through email. Uh, for me, that's where I'll be able to share most of uh, my information. Uh, so if you have any questions at all, my name is Terrell Diggs. You can see, uh, reach me at tdiggs at uh, newheightscharterschoolbrockton.org, uh, just with the, the letters. Yep. Yep. So we have tryouts for basketball at the high school level. Currently we have a, yep, yep. So currently we have a JV and varsity team. Um, so students will be able to try out for those. And let's say that you have a student that's in the eighth grade, seventh grade, and we don't have many high school students that might not be interested at the, you know, to play basketball for New Heights. Um, your students will be able to try out for the team as well. So we do allow middle school students to participate at the high school level. When, Up, when can they try out? Ba basketball, you'll get more information about that as, uh, as we come. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, once we get into, I, I want to say late fall, you'll hear more information from me. Um, basketball trials typically start December 2nd, so that early, early time uh, then. But again, you'll find more informa information from me um, as we get closer to that time. Right now, we're focused on the fall. Any other questions? Ooh. Yes, track is available. So that'll be available at the high school level as well uh, for boys and girls. So once they get to that point, they can try out too. And I wanna say um, New Heights, as it being a very new school, the athletic program is another piece that's developing as well. Um, so within that plan, we hope to continue to expand our athletic teams um, so we can offer more opportunities. One thing, one of the reasons why I stepped into this role is because I love uh, providing opportunities and experiences uh, for students. You know, part of the reason why I enjoyed school personally was because of what was offered at the end of the day. Um, so my job here is to try to expand that and uh, provide as many opportunities for your children as they make their way through, uh, through New Heights. With that being said, uh, they're gonna be wearing New Heights clothing. So we also have that college ready, high expectations for those students as well, because that's the one group that truly uh, represents New Heights outside of this building. So once they become a part of the team, just understand that it's a commitment. Uh, they must be dedicated and they must uh, represent our school community as well. Yep. No, ask as many questions as you want. Yep. And there is no 
Yep. Yeah, we're trying to keep it black, um, just so that, again, we're trying to keep it across the board that students are kind of looking the same, um, trying to keep the uniform going throughout, you know, the school as well as athletics. So if you could go black, uh, mm -hmm, for sure. Yep, that'll work. And then for shirts, it's about just making plain. Um, we're not doing shirts with designs or anything along those lines. So if you can have plain shirts for your uh, students as you send them in to uh, to to. PE class, that would be ideal as well. Right. Yep. Uh, sneakers, um, you know, they're going to be moving around, so um, if they wear shoes that aren't necessarily ath athletic shoes, um, we don't want them to get hurt. So along the lines of our nurses, we're in PE class as well, we want to make sure that we're protecting the safety of our students. So if they're athletic sneakers, um, they're good. If they're shoes or boots, I wouldn't recommend that just because it'd be a little bit hard to move um, in that attire. So sneakers, um, any kind will work as long as they're um, athletic type and not boots, shoes, or anything like that that might get them hurt. Yeah, keep them going. Depends on the teacher. So teachers can go between both. Um, just depends on what they're doing in class that day. Yeah. We have our gym teacher here. You can answer some questions as well. We use the outside space where everyone was earlier. That is where we move to use outside. If it's very hot like today, we will not go outside. We stay in the gym. Most of the time, we go outside so we can have, I'm sorry, so we can have larger space for all our classes in the gym. Yeah, we try our best to not not have the scent too strong, so they can bring deodorant that works too. Yep. So for seventh grade. Yep. So the question was, what sports are available at the middle school level for seventh, eighth, sixth graders? Uh, so we have currently have soccer, co-ed soccer uh, for middle school students. So boys and girls will be trying out for the same team, uh, and then we also offer uh, flag football. Any other questions? Are there any, thank you, Mr. Diggs, are there any questions that are not specific to athletics or PE? I'm going to share the wealth of my queen and go over there, and then I'll come to you, okay? What's the question? What is the process? for enrollment for the Boys and Girls Club. Mr. Chin, do you know the answer to that? The process for, enroll for students' enrollment and access to the Boys and Girls Club? It will be directly with the Boys and Girls Club. Usually it is telling them that they are New Heights Scholar and sometimes you have to show them an email or something like that. Um, and if there's any issues, just send myself, Dr. Sumner, or the principal, Dr. Jones, um, what the next, like, could be the hard time with it. In the middle. Yes. After school programs will start by about October, um, and it really varies on our teacher leadership, and so just because we have a uh, after school program last year, that doesn't mean we will have it this year, but we will have after school, so check your email when we create the menu and the schedule for what offerings we will have. We'll definitely have um, after school tutoring, um, I'm pretty sure we might have a cooking club or a gardening club, but we will have after school. So stay tuned for what our offerings will be. In front and in the back, yes. Um, 
You order the uniform from a website, and then they give you like a receipt or tell you when it's coming. Okay, if it says the order was completed and it doesn't come in time for your baby, just send your baby with something that shows that we know that it's coming, and we'll take care of it. Okay? We're not going to penalize you for a technical error with the website. Was that your question? If we could try to keep the talking down to a minimum, if you do not, huh? if you do not have any questions, this is technically the end of the presentation. If you do have questions, please remain so that we can hear those who have those questions. So if you are remaining, that means you have a question, and that means we need to be listening just in case someone asks that same question. Thank you, beloved. But I have this rule. Yes. Hold on, pause. Go for it. If you leave me, we love you. We will see you. Yes, if you sign that, you can give it up here. If you are leaving, we look forward to loving on your babies on September 4th. Thank you for coming. Be safe. Be well. Who am I here with today? Um, hi, I'm Sophie Joseph Lore. Nice to meet you, Sophie. Um, what is the reason you are here at this event today? I'm here today to welcome all the students back. Um, congratulate those students who are starting off ninth grade at New Heights, and for the students who are returning um, and they taking classes with us at either here at, at um, New Heights or at the college. So just welcome them back to campus and wish them an exciting school year and safe school year. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Who am I here with today? Cassandra Prophet. And I'm Patrick St. Martin. Nice to meet you both. Uh, would you guys like to tell me a little bit on why you're here today? So with me, I'm here working on a project to make financial literacy mandatory in schools. The project is actually funded by a grant from the Department of Public Health, um, and I'm working in conjunction with Patrick, who's from Bay State, and we're just trying to make it possible that students um, that are at this school and also other Brockton schools um, get the opportunity to learn about financial literacy. We know that it's something that we really needed to learn when we were younger, and maybe in some ways we've gotten some variation of it, but not as much as what we really needed. So we're working on making that possible. And what is your role in all this? So um, we work together. My name is Patrick. Once again, I'm a prevention coordinator with Bay State Community Services. My job mainly is to provide prevention and cessation resources. So if you need help, you need tips talking to your children about vaping, any schools in the area, you're thinking about vaping presentations, if you missed mine, feel free to reach out. You can reach out to me at, oh man, what's my email? P-S-T-M-A-R-T-I-N at baystate, B-A-Y-S-T-A-T-E-C-S dot O-R-G. Reach out to us. Thank you guys very much for your time. Hello, who am I here with today? Hi, I'm Barbara Cotton. I'm the Executive Director for our Southeastern Mass Chapter of the American Red Cross. Nice to meet you, Barbara. Um, I just had a quick question. Why are you out here today? So I was invited by Pastor Mike and Eva to come and support the school. I think what the kids here are doing is absolutely wonderful. And we're looking to start a Red Cross Club here, get kids involved in leadership opportunities, as well as um, talking about the importance of donating blood. That's great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Hello. Who am I here with today? Eva Gilbert. Nice to meet you, Eva. Um, I just wanted to ask, why are you out here today with New Charter Heights? Actually, I am here representing the Shaw's supermarket, and because Shaw's is ready and willing to promote healthy eating. So today we have apples for them, 
We have the variety of snacks that's available that is good nutrition. So it's important if we get up and have a healthy meal throughout the day, right, then our day would be good. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, who am I here with today? Uh, Mike Gilbert. Nice to meet you, Mike. Uh, why are you all here today? I'm out here today because um, um, I'm uh, part of the Umbrella Project Foundation uh, out here in Brockton, Massachusetts. It is a faith-based portion of uh, my church, New Life Temple of Holiness. It's just a pleasure to serve. Also, a boy here uh, at New Heights Charter School.